In June of 2013, I purchased the Rock Island Armory 1911 FS Tactical, and I've been carrying it as my EDC ever since, until lately. Granted that there have been a few other pistols carried during that time, but the Rock has been carried the most often. I thought that this would be a good time to evaluate the Rock and determine how well it has held up over the years. With about 5,000 rounds of ammunition expended, as many hollow point projectiles leaving its barrel, and it being cleaned after every shooting session. This pistol has never been ridden hard and put up wet, as I have a tendency to take care of those who take care of me. My friend had been carried every time I went out the door to be among the populace, and has served as a house gun. I really did not like it when it first came home with me, with a huge billboard adorning the left side of the slide, but it was the only game in town at the time, and I was willing to endure the billboard for the cartridge that it carried, the 45 ACP, and it was stuffed as full of it as was allowed, with two spare magazines of eight rounds as companions. I never felt that I needed more. The original grips had been replaced by Hogue wraparound finger groove grips, which had to be cut away at the top of the right grip to accommodate the rock's ambidextrous safety lever. The grip screws were replaced with stainless steel screws, and most recently, the mainspring housing has been replaced with an arched unit, my new requirement for a carry 1911 pistol. The front sight had to be filed down to correct a low point of impact. Some red paint provided a sighting surface, while flat gray paint covered the top of the sight to keep it from rusting. Far short of a professional job, for sure. I tuned the extractor, and finally, the recoil spring was changed out to a Wolf 18-pound spring. Other springs have never needed to be replaced. Weighing in at 2 pounds and 14 ounces fully loaded, with 8 rounds of 6-hour V-Crown 230-grain JHP, the Rock Tactical is anything but light. And, like a Glock pistol, the Rock is anything but pretty. But it is highly reliable and combat accurate. I really cannot ask any more than that, and that is the reason it was carried for nine years. The Rock is an affordable common man's working pistol, as its predecessors were and successors continue to be. The 1911 itself was designed for war, built for war, and proved its worth in war since 1911, and it has served law enforcement and competition folks as well. You know, Sometimes a man's worth is measured by the friends he has, the guns he keeps, and what watch he wears. I have tried over the years to keep my ego in check, and I hope that the rock is proof of that. That does not mean that I do not have better and more expensive 1911 pistols. But simply, I would rather the bad guy be impressed with what he was just shot with than the looks of the firearm that launched the projectile. Before I get too far off track, let me get back to the rock 1911 FS Tactical. Externally, holster wear on the rock has been minimal, although it has been slid in and pulled out of a modified Black Arch IWB holster more times than I can count. The extractor has pulled many an empty shell casing, and the ejection port has seen its share of empty cases expelled. Front side paint is showing some wear, but that is easily touched up. The whole finger groove rubber grips which have been on it since it was purchased, are holding up well, with nary a sign of handling. The arched mainspring housing has really helped the pistol conform to my hand. I am pretty much convinced that all of my 1911 pistols that will be carried will have arched mainspring housings. The trigger over-travel adjustment screw has never been touched and did not need to be. The trigger over-travel was next to nothing from the factory and has remained so since. The trigger has broken in nicely and has an average trigger pull of 3 pounds, 5.4 ounces. The trip point is still crisp and take up is still acceptable. The ambidextrous thumb safety operates as well now as it did when new. Positive click in both directions. Although somewhere on the right side frame where the thumb safety lever rides can be seen. The rock has a one piece full length guide rod or FLGR. Field stripping the rock is the same for field stripping any 1911 with a standard short guide rod. 
No paper clip or guide rod L tool is necessary. So, let's go through the takedown procedure for inspection purposes. Ensure that the firearm is unloaded and cleared. No magazine inserted, no round in the chamber, and no ammunition in close proximity. Since the hammer is cocked from clearing the firearm, set the thumb safety to the safe position. This prevents the slide from moving to the rear when removing the guide rod bushing. I simply use my thumbnail to remove the guide rod bushing. With a full length guide rod, the guide rod rides within the guide rod bushing, and pushing down on the guide rod bushing enough to clear the barrel bushing can sometimes be tricky. The guide rod bushing must be pushed down enough so that the barrel bushing can be turned and also keep the guide rod bushing from flying to who knows where. A simple twist operation of the barrel bushing releases the guide rod bushing. I also removed the recoil spring at this time. Incidentally, you can also use a bushing wrench to do all of this, but one is not needed for the rock. Once the guide rod bushing and spring is removed, I move the slide to the disassembly notch, remove the takedown unit from the frame, and then remove the slide from the frame. Remove the full length guide rod, remove the barrel bushing, and then remove the barrel. Field stripping of the rock for inspection and maintenance is now completed. Moving inward, moving parts are showing no sign of excessive wear. Metal to metal contact points are easily identified and I maintain a good coating of Wilson Combat Ultima Lube 2 Universal Oil on all metal-to-metal -metal contact surfaces to keep wear to a minimum. The barrel, including the swing link, is still in excellent shape and is showing normal signs of wear and tear in certain areas after nine years of use. Assembly is pretty close to what you would perform with a standard short guide rod, with minor differences. So let's put the rock back together. Insert the barrel into the slide. Install the barrel bushing. Install the full length guide rod and slide the recoil spring over the guide rod. Move the barrel swing link to a position that enables you to capture the swing link with the takedown pin. Using the takedown pin, locate the swing link and just push the takedown assembly pin lightly through the swing link. Position the slide to the disassembly notch in the frame. Use a straight downward motion to push the takedown assembly into the frame. This lessens the chance that you will scratch the frame or slide while installing the takedown assembly. Pull or push the slide fully forward and then place the thumb safety lever up in the safe up position. A word of caution, keep your face away from the muzzle while performing this procedure. Not doing so could result in serious injury. With the muzzle facing upward, install the guide rod bushing on top of the recoil spring. Push the guide rod bushing and recoil spring down until the lip of the guide rod bushing can just engage the barrel bushing. 
twist the barrel bushing into place onto the lip of the guide rod bushing and release the tension of the guide rod bushing so that it is against the barrel bushing. For this next operation, I do recommend a bushing wrench. While supporting the pistol, I use a bushing wrench to press the guide rod bushing down enough where I can rotate the barrel bushing completely over the top of the guide rod bushing and lock everything into place. At this point, I load one snap cap into the magazine and load the magazine into the pistol. My reason is threefold. First, when the firing pin falls, it and the firing pin stop is protected by the snap cap. Second, I can rack the slide and check for extraction. Third, in racking the slide, I can also check for ejection. Push the thumb safety to the fire position and release the slide, which chambers the snap cap. You can now perform a function check of the pistol. Once the thumb safety is off safe in a down position and the grip safety is pressed inward by the palm of the hand, pull the trigger and the hammer will fall. If the hammer falls when the trigger is pulled with either the thumb safety in the safe up position or the grip safety is not pressed in, seek professional help for your pistol. You have an unsafe condition. Pull the slide to the rear and check that extraction works and the snap cap is ejected from the pistol. Since the snap cap was the only thing in the magazine, the slide should automatically lock back, assuming that you pulled the slide far enough to the rear. Remove the magazine, pull the slide to the rear, and then slowly let the slide move forward until it stops. Use the thumb and forefinger to hold the hammer while you pull the trigger and slowly lower the hammer. So, let me load up some magazines, and off to the range we go. In my case, and as I mentioned earlier, I had to shave off some of the front sight to adjust the point of impact. Using some mathematical calculations, I determined how much material to remove. Luckily, I only had to remove the front slope of the sight. You see, the front sight on this particular model had a slope to the muzzle end. I only had to remove the slope and make the front sight level to accomplish what I was looking for. POA equals POI at a combat distance. What I accomplished was that the rock is now a point and shoot affair. Place the front and rear sight on what I want to hit, squeeze the trigger, and hopefully hit what I'm aiming at. Normal caffeine induced shaking hands notwithstanding. I use magazines from Metbar and Wilson Combat, and all have run well in this pistol. 230 grain FMJ and JHP feed and shoot reliably. The trigger set and reset is excellent and contributes to the performance of the pistol, which is more accurate than I can make it. The Rock 1911 FS Tactical has been a reliable carry companion for nine years, and I had no great expectations regarding its performance. It is not a target pistol, but it has more than acceptable combat accuracy. It runs Mozambique drills and hallway drills with a plume. I had saved my life on this pistol and it has never let me down, unless there was a magazine issue. But that is true with any magazine fed firearm. I was carrying the rock with the original flush mount seven round magazine that shipped with the pistol and two Mekgar eight round magazines in reserve. If you would rather have bragging rights carrying a Colt Dan Wesson, Sig Sauer, or Custom Wilson Combat, or other 1911, that's your prerogative. However, I recommend the Rock Island series of 1911 pistols as an EDC for those who cannot afford a medium to high-end 1911. Sometimes they take a little tweaking, as mine did, but these are mil-spec pistols built to modern standards. The newer Rock 1911 pistols no longer have the billboard because arm score opted to have a simple logo placed on the rear of the slide, which cleaned up the look of the pistol. The newer Rock 1911 pistols are as worthy of carry as mine. On a final note, the Rock 1911 FS Tactical is no longer available. However, a Rock Standard 
FS-45 ACP has taken its place. A step up in the ROC series would be the ROC Ultra FS-45 ACP. With this package, you get a fiber front sight, fully adjustable rear sight, VZ grips, and magwell, in addition to the other standard features like the skeletonized hammer, a trigger with adjustable over travel stop, ambidextrous safety, and extended beaver tail grip safety. The ROC Ultra FS, MS, and CS in 45 ACP are part of my 1911 collection, and you can read my written review of my Ultra Happy Family at the link that I included in the description. This ROC family of pistols have been excellent shooters for the money, but now are nearing the Ruger, Kimber, and Springfield Armory family of 1911 pistols as far as cost. Anyway, if you buy into the Rock Island Armory family of 1911 pistols, you will be making a good choice. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you will return for another review. In the meantime, stay safe out there.